I'm your host, Aaron Heath. I'd like to take a moment and thank you for downloading, subscribing, and most importantly, listening to episode number 83 of the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. You can find the show notes by going to gunrightsintexas.com slash 083. Our carry tip for this episode is look for exit, blah, look for exits, cover, and concealment. Anytime you go into a place or you're, you go into a different area, always, excuse me, I've got a, I'm actually getting over, a, over an illness right now. Just a little, uh, I think it's my sinuses more than anything else. But anytime you go into an area or into a building or into a room, Look for potential exits as well as potential cover and potential concealment. If something happens, you want to be able to escape or to put something that will stop bullets between you and the, uh, and the attacker. Or, I, or if nothing else, something that will keep the attacker from being able to see where you're at to shoot you or otherwise harm you. I know I kind of botched that one, but I'm still recovering from this. And I still have a uh, very bad headache. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit the audio clip that tells you how to get the show. And then we're going to come back. We're going to touch on some things listeners have, well, for lack of a better term, things that listeners have actually been asking me about. And then we're going to touch on something that actually led to listeners asking me about this. So with that said, here's how you get the show. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast is available on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Myro Player, YouTube, the website, and of course, in your favorite app using the RSS feed on the website. With all those options, there is no excuse for not subscribing. Links to all these can be found on every page of the website. Okay, we're seeing a lot of comments come in on various states that have passed or are in the process of passing constitutional carry. and where I'm seeing a lot of these people, well, why won't you support it in Texas? I would love to support it if it had a chance. If it doesn't have a chance, I'm not going to fight it, but I'm not going to support it either because my efforts can be directed to something far more productive. I'll be honest. I'm not going to waste time supporting something that has no chance of passing. I mean, it'd be far more productive to, to quote the song, change the air in my tires. But let's look at the states that have passed or are in the process of passing constitutional or unlicensed carry. Let's see here. Have these states had people going out and doing armed protest to support this movement? I don't think so. In fact, I'm almost willing to bet that none of them have had it. Let me tell you why I'm willing to bet it, because they have managed to get the legislation passed. This is not something that happens as a result of protest and stomping your feet and holding your breath. It's something that happens because of hard work in the legislature with an effort to educate legislators and to educate the public that, hey, gun owners aren't bad people and the criminals are already breaking the law and carrying without it. You have to let the legislators, you have to let the public know that they're not going to be giving criminals a free pass. The criminals are already doing it. So what do you do? Well, what you do is... You go in there and you say, look, we're not going to stand outside your door. We're not going to keep you from shutting your door. We're not going to march up and down the streets of your city or your town or anything like that. We're going to sit down. We're going to present facts to you, and we're going to show you why this legislation would make your state safer. That's how you pass legislation. It's far more involved than that, but that's that's how professionals pass legislation. Now then, the other issue I want to touch on And this one, I've caused a little bit of confusion on. Two weeks ago, I was very busy with with other projects. None of them are podcast related or even this podcast related. I was working on my Jeep. I had to do things around the house. It's just one of those things where I just did not have time to get an episode out. And I'm doing good to be able to get it out now because I'm behind again, considering that I've spent, of the last four days, I've spent three of them not feeling good. So the fact that I didn't have an episode two weeks ago caused people to think maybe I'm shutting the podcast down. And when I made, when I threw something out there on Facebook and Twitter, it caused a lot of people to think maybe I was shutting it down 
because of another podcast starting up. And let me tell you right now, if I thought for an instant that it would help the other podcast, yeah, I would shut mine down in a heartbeat because the other podcast is hosted by somebody that's more knowledgeable, got more experience, and they have a better background on the subject. And those of you who are not following me on Facebook or Twitter may be wondering, what is he talking about? What I'm talking about is the Texas Firearms Coalition podcast hosted by someone I've had on this podcast a number of times, Charles Cotton. I'll be honest, as far as, as, far as a podcast on gun rights in the state of Texas, you can't go wrong by looking at Charles Cotton's podcast. And if you only have time for one podcast on the subject of gun rights in the state of Texas, I hate to say it, but it's true. Go listen to Charles. Don't listen to mine. Listen to Charles. The reason I say to listen to his instead of mine if you only got time for one is because he he's going to actually do a better job of addressing the issue. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and I'll be honest, I don't listen to that many gun podcasts. I listen to podcasts about podcasting. I listen to podcasts on automotive subjects, which I have been working on my automotive podcast. I keep walking away from it, going back to it, and right now that's progressing. But I do a lot of I do listen to a lot of different podcasts on a, on a number of different topics. And I don't see Charles as a competitor. Just the opposite. I see Charles as a necessary component to this podcast. I'm not going to go into detail and explain why I feel that way. I am going to throw up a link to his podcast in the show notes just so that you can find it. Or you can go to TexasFirearmsCoalition.com and in the menu bar, the page list, or whatever it is at the top, there's a button called Podcast. Click on it. It'll take you to all the episodes. Now, I am recording this on March 21st of 2016, and I would have recorded it about an hour ago. However, I got a notification that he had released a new episode, so I stopped and listened to it. Now, that doesn't really affect the listeners of this podcast much because it only means I'm delayed on post-production and releasing mine by an hour, and it'll probably be closer to March 22nd when this one comes out. But it's out there before mine, and I want to really pitch it. Now, if you listen to episode six of the Texas Firearms Coalition podcast, you notice that Charles has a guest on. It's uh, his wife. I believe her name's Martha Cotton. Good Lord, I'm starting to butcher names I've said for years. I mean, how can I butcher Cotton? But anyways, I believe her name's Martha Cotton. Oh, Lord. I'm wanting to add an R to Cotton after her name. But the truth of it is, He has her on talking about women and firearms, and he talks more about the history of firearm or of the concealed handgun license program. Plus, he goes back and he talks about the importance of training. I cannot get over, or I cannot, I cannot stress enough how important it is to get trained when you carry a firearm. You don't have to have it, but it increases your chance of success should you have to use that weapon. And if you can do it, Go ahead and get extra training. But don't listen to me. Go download and listen to Charles Cotton's episode 6 on the Texas Firearms Coalition podcast. And you'll understand better than I can in this little amount of time that I've set aside. You know what that said, I'm going to run the clip that tells you how to find the show on social media. And I want to probably take a little bit of antihistamine while that's going on. Then I'll be back and we'll hit our topic. The Gun Rights in Texas podcast has a social media presence. You can like it on Facebook, you can follow it on Twitter, you can circle it on Google+, and you can follow it on Instagram. With all those options, let's get social. Okay, I'm back, and, uh, well, let's talk about our subject here. Our subject today is going to be schools and legal carry. Now, right now... Campus carry is not legal. The reason I say right now, this is March 21st of 2016. Excuse me. Now, the reason March 21st of 2016 is important to mention, that's the day I'm recording this episode. Campus carry goes into effect for the most part on August 1st of 2016. Until August 1st of 2016, there is no open carry at all on property owned by or on a college campus, okay? I mean, even even in places where it's legal to conceal carry, you cannot open carry. 
And I could be wrong about that, but I'm 99.99s certain that that's the case. Concealed carry is only legal outside of the buildings unless it's authorized. After August 1st, open carry is still prohibited. However, concealed carry is legal in all locations unless they are placed off limits, and I believe they have to post a 30 6 sign. And those off limits locations have to be reasonable. If they're not, well, we're going to have a little bit of a tussle between the legislature and the campuses, or not campuses, but the colleges. Now, a lot of people just do not understand the importance of campus carry. I don't know who all has been at the UT campus in Austin. I didn't go to school there, but when I was in high school, I was at the UT campus for a little bit. I mean, it was a couple of days that we went. That we went, we did something that was school related, and one of the things that really stuck out to me was the campus tower. And while we were there, we actually got a history lesson on the campus tower shooting, and that has always stuck with me. You see a lot of references to school shootings. You see references to uh, college shootings in the news. You see references to high school shootings in the news, junior high, elementary schools. The gun banners will dance in the blood indefinitely. And the worst thing about it is their proposed solution only makes the problem worse. There was actually return fire directed at the UT shooter. After he was pinned down, it allowed, or when he was pinned down, it allowed officers, and I believe it was a pharmacist who had his own personal weapon, to enter the tower go up there and stop him. This is super important for people to keep in mind. It wasn't just law enforcement that went up there to stop this guy. There was an armed civilian that went up there. Now, yeah, he was carrying illegally, unlawful carry of a weapon if you want to get right down to it. However, you know, he could have made use of a necessity defense in that case, but nothing, there was no need because nobody ever charged him. Well, why is this important? Well, Roll forward to Virginia Tech, which I believe was the first, and to my knowledge, the only college shooting worse than the UT shooting. At Virginia Tech, nobody had a means of returning fire. The shooter went on a rampage. He actually chained the door shut where people could not get in as first responders. Essentially, he locked him and his victims up in the building with himself. And this is not good. When you have a whole bunch of unarmed civilians locked in a building with a crazed civilian nothing short of military operate or military personnel are really going to have a pathway into that building if somebody has planned it out very well you know you know some people say well the SWAT team not every city not every county has a SWAT team you know I will admit most 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 Texas cities that are big enough to have a community college or a junior college probably do have something equivalent to a SWAT team. But even then, they're not a, they're not really experienced at coming up with ways to breach a building. You're going to have to go to a bigger city to find a team that's properly equipped to do that. Consider, well, I'm not entirely sure about that. But even if you have somebody that's properly trained to breach that building, you're still slowing them down. And that phrase, when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. When seconds count and the bad guy delays the police additional minutes, it gets worse. And here's the deal. I, I've used that term too much. So rest of this episode, no more here's the deal. So here's my thoughts. Community colleges probably are not going to have anybody available if the doors are chained shut with the training of a military sapper that can go in and use debt cord to make a new entrance. Most likely what they'll end up doing is trying to approach the building, hook a chain or a tow strap to the doors, hook it up to a vehicle, and see if they can pull the doors open. If they can do that, then they'll try to enter. If they can't, they'll look for another way in. The problem is, while they're doing this, the shooter is inside doing his thing without worry. And then once the officers get in there, they have to worry, okay, he was smart enough to delay us getting in. Does he have a booby trap as soon as we go in? They have to worry about that. They have to worry that this guy's going to look out a window and start shooting at them while they try to get in. However, if at Virginia Tech you had had one student in that first classroom 
that the shooter went into and started shooting the place up, if you'd had one armed individual who could have drawn his weapon and confronted him, odds are it would have been over at that point. Now, the anti-gunners, they say, well, uh, the armed civilian is not really going to be reacting under the best of situations, and they're going, they're going to miss as much as they hit, or maybe more, miss more than they hit. So, can you honestly tell me that you're sitting in a room where a crazed lunatic is coming in, he's going to shoot the place up, you would rather him to run amok and have no one there to confront him or try to stop him, opposed to somebody that might injure or kill somebody stopping this guy and preventing his body count from reaching double digits or triple digits. You would rather you would rather this guy run amok and hit a double digit or triple digit body count instead of be confronted and get shut down. I don't believe people when they say, well, it's better that nobody's armed in there. I call bull on that. I do have one more thing I want to touch on, but before I get into it, I want to I want to run the audio clip that tells you how to get in touch with me. And then I'll come back and I'll touch on some K through 12 stuff. And after that, we'll end the show because while our news girl did give me some news articles, I just haven't felt like adding them to the show notes. So they're not going to be in there. And well, they're not going to be there. What can I say? So here's how to get in touch with me and complain that I didn't have any news articles. If you want to contact the podcast, please send email to Aaron at gunrightsintexas.com. Or you can leave a comment on the webpage, which is gunrightsintexas.com. However, if you want to leave a voicemail and be featured on the show, then please do so by dialing 409 292 Six seven three six. Well, I am going to I am going to say this. All of my little audio clips where I'm doing a voiceover, I'm going to change those up. I am going to record new ones. It's going to be the same music, but each one of them has the audio at a different level, and I need to fix that. I don't like playing with the audio levels on the mixer while these things are playing, so that everything ends up sounding good. I just want one audio level and just leave it alone. Now, we have had some emails come in about K through 12 schools and well, people are really wanting to wanting to know what if they're sitting in Subway eating a sandwich and a busload of students stop. Do they have to leave? Well, it's a school sponsored activity. However, does Texas Penal Code 4603 apply? And the truth of it is it will take case law to determine for a fact. However, I don't think it, I don't really think it's an issue. Now, 4603A, let's see, yes, 4603A, a person commits offense if the person intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly possesses or goes with a firearm, illegal knife, club, or prohibited weapon listed in section 46.05A, and then we hit subsection 1, or subsection A1, on the physical premises of a school or educational institution, any grounds or building on which an activity sponsored by a school or educa- educational institution is being conducted, or a passenger transportation vehicle of a school or educational institution, whether the school or educational institution is public or private, unless pursuant to written regulations or written authorization of the institution. Now, that last little part about the written regulations or written authorization of the institution is what's key. If that subway has a 30-06 sign posted, the school cannot create a written authorization for someone to carry onto that property. They cannot create a written regulation authorizing someone to carry on that property unless they own it. So here's, here's what to consider, okay? If they cannot authorize you to carry on there, then the law will not allow, or it's not really a prohibition if they show up. Now, some people may say, well, you were there first, and the school cannot just simply make a space off limits. But if if you show up after them, you can. Well, once again, the school cannot authorize somebody to carry on property they do not own or control. Therefore, by just simply showing up, they cannot prohibit carry either. 
Now, Charles explains this in a Texas CHL forum thread. I don't remember where it is, and I would look it up, but Texas CHL forum has been flaky at best for the last eh, 24 to 48 hours, somewhere in there. And I'm not going to have time to find it and add it to the show notes. I'm sorry. But the logic is, and Charles does a much better job explaining it than I do, but the logic is essentially, if they cannot create a written authorization to override the prohibition or to override any prohibition on that property, then by simply showing up, they cannot create a prohibition. So it's a whole different story if they are, say, leasing the property, because now they have control of the property and they can authorize carry or they can prohibit carry. But if they don't lease that property or they don't own that property, they can't authorize you to carry past any signage that's posted, and therefore their mere presence does not create a prohibition. But this is not my opinion, as, and if you listen to my opinion and act on it, well, don't expect me to try and help you either. What I'm trying to say is don't take my word for it, but even in... Even in Attorney General opinion, KP, I want to say KP0047. I may be wrong about that. Attorney General Ken Paxton actually gave us a pretty good idea of how he would rule if he was faced with off-premise school activity. And essentially, it would be what I have said here. Now, th- like I said, this is going to be a very short episode. Or I haven't said it, but it's obvious it is because there's not going to be any news. I do want to touch on one more thing relating to schools. We're seeing a lot of elementary and junior high and high school, essentially K through 12 schools. We're seeing a lot of them going to a system where they're authorizing teachers to carry. This is great. The more that do it, the better off we can be with getting our schools to, with getting our schools to provide the legislature with a basis to say, Hey, the HL holders, need to be able to carry into schools and we can remove off limits locations to license holders. I keep saying CHL. I got to retrain myself to to say license to carry holders. I really think in the next legislative session, we can honestly expect to see a major push forward to get rid of off limits locations. We may not get rid of all of them, but we will, we will repeal a few, if not a majority, or at least that's my hope. Oh, man, I'm starting to, my antihistamine that I took is not kicking in yet. Big surprise, it's only, it's not even been 30 minutes since I took it, but I'm starting to get real stuffy. I want to wrap this up, so let me just say this. Go out there, go to TexasFirearmsCoalition.com, click on the podcast link, listen to Charles' podcast. If you've got iTunes on a, uh, if you've got an iPhone, iPod, you got iTunes on your computer, or even if you're using an iPad, which I will admit, I did bring an iPad into the studio today, and I'll explain that in a moment. Download or subscribe to Charles Cotton's podcast and listen to it. He's on episode six. It just dropped. Uh, I just dropped a little bit before I recorded this episode of this podcast. And then, if you got access to the iTunes Store, go in. And give him a five-star review. Last I knew, I was the only one to do so. I've given him one review. And I have really pushed that podcast on everything I can think of. But yeah, show Charles a little bit of podcast love. I would I would uh, put an audio clip of his in here. But I really haven't had a chance to email him or message him on Texas CHL forum and ask him for permission. And the last thing you want to do is uh, violate the copyright of an attorney. I'm certain he wouldn't have a problem with it, but I don't want, it would just be rude not to get his permission before using his work, even if it was to promote his own work, and it wouldn't be right. So go out there, go to TexasFirearmsCoalition.com, or if you've got iTunes or an iPhone, iPod, iPad, just do a search for the Texas Firearms Coalition podcast and subscribe. Leave him a five-star review in iTunes and give him, you know, it helps him out. It helps people find his podcast if you give him a great review. I've never asked for that on mine. I don't even think about it. I'm not here to really push mine. 
my philosophy is if somebody really wants to hear what I've got to say, they'll, they'll find me. And I'll be honest, the numbers on my podcast show it. It shows that quite a few people want to hear what I have to say. With that said, let me close this episode down and talk about the iPod that I, or iPad I brought into the studio. Now I use, for a soundboard, I use a, I normally use a Google Nexus 7 tablet. This is an old tablet. It's like a 2012 model. And unfortunately, when it updated to Marshmallow, it became seriously sluggish. I really need to go in, unlock it, install a, install an older version of Android, and be good there. But don't want to get messed, get to messing around with it, not when I'm trying to get an episode out. So I took the iPad that I have for my drone. Yes, I do have what people call a drone. It's a quadcopter. I took the iPad I use for it, and I won't go into the details about how I've got the iPad, but it's pretty much dedicated to that. And I went out and I bought a, I bought an app in the iTunes store for the iPad, and it's designed to help people podcast. And my thought was, this will let me record a podcast on the iPad, and I can use it as my soundboard too. And that's what I've done. I've actually installed this. And I've used it for that purpose, at least on this episode. So with that said, let's wrap this episode up. It's almost 40 minutes long without news. And when I go through and I clip out all the dead space, like where I muted it and had coughing fits, it'll get quite a bit shorter. Now, every time I've uh, sneezed or coughed or something like that and I didn't mute it, I've said something like thank you or excuse me or something like that. So I may leave a few of those in there by accident. If I do, I apologize. If I miss a sneeze or a coughing fit, I apologize for that too. With that said, stay safe and carry responsibly. Thank you for listening to the Gun Rights in Texas podcast. Please leave a review on iTunes or send feedback to the host. Your input will be used to improve the show. Stay safe and please carry responsibly.